Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and in this video I'm going to talk about three types of lighting consoles that you may have seen and how to start to figure out which one is right for you. Then next week we'll continue it up with a little bit more in depth into thinking about how to choose the right lighting console. Now, why do I spend so much time talking about lighting consoles here on Learn Stage Lighting? Oh, well, the, the big reason why is that the lighting console is literally the brain of your lighting system. Now, you're the brain of the console, um, you control it, but it's still this single point where the information goes from your brain to your, your lights. And, it, and it's the point in between those two. It's the thing that you use your brain and your hands to communicate to your lights how to work. Now, this might not seem like, like a huge deal, but if, if you choose the right lighting console, um, it will be, life will be great. You'll be able to program everything you want to program, and it will be easy for you to learn that and, and get it done. If you choose wrong, you literally won't be able to do some of the things that you want to do when you're programming, and it, it's going to be very difficult for you to learn. And so we, we don't want you to be in that circumstance, but rather we do want you to be in bliss, in lighting console bliss. And so the next question becomes, what lighting console should I use? And, and that's such a big topic. It's such an interesting topic to me because every day I'm working with people and I'm always talking to people who maybe got a recommendation of a console or software to use uh, from a friend or somebody, uh, you know, a famous lighting designer or something like that. And I run into people every day who go, I'm trying to learn this thing. I want to know this thing, but it's driving me crazy or it can't do what I want or, or I got this basic lighting console and it can't do what I need. And I hate that. And so what I like to do is I like to separate lighting consoles into three main buckets. And sure, not every lighting console fits perfectly into one of these categories, but I think by breaking it down, it can help you figure out from the get go, okay, which type of console should I use? Which type of console am I looking for? And then from there, you can narrow it down to just a few options within that range, which is actually what we'll be doing here on YouTube over the next few months. And so what we're going to do here basically is talk about basic lighting consoles versus intermediate level lighting consoles versus professional grade lighting consoles. And we're going to talk about pros and cons of each because Getting the right console, like I mentioned, makes your life so much easier. So starting at the bottom, basic lighting consoles are the entry level, the first foray into lighting. Maybe when you think, maybe when you think about an entry level lighting console, you think about something like a Chauvet Obey 40 and an ADJ or, you know, all the other brands have something that looks just like this. And it's got some buttons, it's got some faders, it's got some scenes, um, and you can trigger some really basic stuff with it. Or maybe when you think about a basic lighting console, you think about a software like Entex DMXs, which is a big favorite of mine because of its ease of use and ability to get somewhat complex. Uh, what really sets basic lighting consoles apart is that they're quick and easy for someone to learn. That's the biggest differentiator. That's the biggest thing that sets them apart. Now, they can go from the most basic, like that Obey 40 that I was just looking at, to something like DMXs, which actually is able to control um, a decent number of lights, and it's able to control moving lights and LEDs and, and all of that different stuff and make different things, um, but it's not always the fastest to do so. And so the, the positives really on an entry level lighting console is that you can typically pick them up and learn them pretty quickly. Okay. There's not a ton of time that you're going to have to invest in learning them. And once you know them, you're able to program with them. However, you're going to hit at some point a ceiling where the console can't do something complex or can't do any more. Uh, for something like these little Obey 40s, that ceiling is very low. Okay, uh, either these consoles, and there's lots of them out there, um, 
fix the addresses so you can only address lights at certain DMX addresses. You have to hit these clunky different fixture buttons and they're really loud. And you're not even able to program scenes onto the faders, which to me is the biggest frustration with consoles like these. Um, transitioning, thinking about software on the other hand, a software like DMX's can do a lot of things. You can program in different scenes. You can have fade times to those scenes, which is something these Obey series really lack. Uh, you can program moving lights, etc., etc., etc. But there's a limited number of control channels, like DMX's only uses one universe, and other similar consoles are the same way. And if you're using up that full universe, uh, because of the ease of programming just a few lights, when you have to go to program a lot of lights, it becomes much more difficult because you don't have concepts in them like groups, selecting multiple lights at once, etc. It's not easy to do. So at that point, when you're sitting there and maybe you demo a lighting software, that's, that's a great way with a lot of these software-based controllers is you can demo a lot of them. Uh, for hardware-based controllers, you're just going to have to watch the tutorial videos. But in a software demo, you can start to figure out, okay, is this going to work for me or, or is it not? But if, if you figure out that it's not, you're hitting that ceiling and you say, okay, this is too simplistic for me, or I need to control multiple universes of DMX, I have a lot more lights, etc., etc., then it's time to step up to an intermediate level lighting console. Now, there's a lot of them out there. A couple of my favorites are uh, Light Shark, Light Key. Um, those are, are really good ones. Um, but this is an interesting segment of, of the lighting console world, simply because over the past years, we've seen it explode again. So it used to be that intermediate consoles were these kind of terrible little hardware controllers. I mean, they were okay, but they left a lot to be desired. You, you know, some of these like were like the Elation Show Designer 2CF. There was, uh, oh, the SGM Pilot uh, 3000, I think it was called. You know, some might consider that a pro-level console, but it was handicapped in a lot of ways. And at the time, these consoles did the best they could. Then, uh, history led way to the intermediate level software lighting console. Okay? And these ones, like uh, Chauvet Show Express, MyDMX, DOS Lite, which are kind of the same program, um, <laughs> you know, Edtix D Pro, uh, Light Key, etc., they're all software based and they can do a lot more than those previous hardware controllers. And, and then today, there's kind of the hybrid software hardware approach with consoles like the Light Shark, like the uh, Camsys Quick Q. I just saw that Blizzard's coming out with a new one, um, the ETC Color source consoles, etc, etc. And all of these, whether software or console, really fit into that middle ground, where it's a little, it can be hard to define, but the, the best way to define it is it's not a basic console, and it's not a pro-level console, okay? It can do more complex things than those basic consoles, but there's, there's a point, especially often when it comes to effects or, or total number of fixtures, where you really hit a wall, where, and this depends console by console, it's all different, where you hit a wall where it gets tough to program, maybe if you have a lot of fixtures, maybe you run out of space of fixtures or cues uh, at a certain point. Again, that varies console by console. Maybe it's just like light key, which can handle a fair amount of fixtures. I think it can handle two universes at the max. But if you start to get a lot of fixtures in there, you find that your preset palettes on the side get really overwhelmed and, and really difficult to work with. And so, uh, and, and with, with things like, uh, the light chart or the Camsys quick queue, or there used to be the MA, uh, dot two and other intermediate level consoles, the effects are often in place where there's a limit to what they can do. They can't do everything that you set your mind to, but you know, you can make a good show out of them. And so the intermediate level, really pros and cons, the pros are that uh, for somebody with very little training or just a little, you can usually get up to speed with these almost as quickly as a basic lighting console with just a little bit more time. But you can do significantly more complex stuff. Uh, the main differentiation though is that they generally cost more than those basic lighting consoles. And so 
hitting this ceiling, whether it be number of fixtures or complexity of programming, means that we're now ready to jump up to a pro-grade lighting console. Now, if you watch this channel a lot, and if you don't, please subscribe, um, you know that my favorite pro-grade lighting console, especially for people just beginning with lighting, is Onyx because it is so user-friendly on the PC um, compared to the others, and it's really solid, it really works well, and their hardware consoles are great too. But anyways, I digress. Um, you could be using Onyx, you could be using Camsys, you could be using Ava Lights, you could be using Grand MA. Um, for the sake of this discussion, the specific console doesn't really matter, but what a pro-grade console does is it takes that gap from the intermediate console where... Um, you hit that ceiling, again, whether it be fixtures, um, complexity of programming, effects, features like moving in black, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it allows you to do pretty much anything your heart desires, including like pixel mapping, um, which is playing video across lights, which I'm actually doing right behind me. And so the interesting thing about the professional grade consoles is that they're not necessarily more expensive than the intermediate level stuff. In fact, often you can do a software setup for free or cheap with these with these consoles, and it's going to be less expensive than an intermediate level console. And so that brings up an interesting point, because I have a lot of people come to me, and they may use a professional console software because they can use it for free or cheap, um, where maybe that person, as I'm talking to them, might be better suited for an intermediate level software or console. Um, and, and in which case, they have to decide, do I want to spend more on this intermediate level console or just take a little more time to learn this professional rig console? And so that is the basic difference between these three levels of console. Now, if you're new to stage lighting or you're new here, as I mentioned, be sure to subscribe and also grab my free guide to beginning with lighting. It's customized to the type of lighting you're doing, whether that be band, uh, church, DJ, or theater lighting. We've got them all, and you can check out the link here as well as below. Awesome. I will see you guys next week where we're going to talk about uh, going a little deeper, how you choose the type of console that's right for you. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.